Winter uh, has given some of the principles of uh, action research. The whole process of action research and the whole experience of action research is woven around these principles. We will see them one by one. The first one is the reflective critic. What this principle means is the here the action researcher, here the person who is conducting the action research himself is a practitioner as well as a researcher. So, he or she reflects upon his own actions and then uh, while reflecting, he is also uh, acting as a critic. So, this is a self-critic, he is uh, crit criticizing his own actions and the decisions made during the action plan. This helps the person or the practitioner to improve upon during the next cycle. So, this is an important, very, very important uh, principle uh, that the person is a uh, self-critic. This uh, process of self-critic, uh, uh, this process of self-criticism uh, is captured especially through something called as research diary. So, the researcher, uh, so the action researcher maintains a research diary especially during the conduction of action plan. Actually, during the whole cycle, the uh, diary is maintained in which he or she keeps on writing about his success, failures, uh, maybe uh, some thoughts that have come regarding the future improvement and uh, the experiences and so on and so forth. And that uh, diary, such a research diary uh, becomes such a fund of knowledge for him or uh, uh, especially when it comes to the uh, future uh, improvements of the uh, action. The next principle is the dialectical critic. Now, as the term uh, talks about dialectical critic, it is the dialogue between the persons. Words are the most powerful uh, media of communication uh, when it comes to sharing the thoughts. So, here in this case, it is the dialogue between the practitioner and the persons, other persons involved. If we consider the educational situation, it will be a dialogue between the students and the teachers. So, they have a dialogue, of course, the teacher takes the responsibility of the success or the failure of the action plan, but the uh, only through the dialogue with the students, the teacher understands the uh, scope for further improvement in the plan, how far it has got the success and uh, what are the various points which need further improvement. It also uh, gives uh, one the uh, insight about what are the feelings about the participants uh, while they are participating in the action plan. And thus, this dialogue gives him the better understanding of the situation and uh, gives the food for uh, further improvement, gives the inputs for further improvement. The next principle in action research is that of the collaborative resource. As a part of action plan, there are also lot of resources uh, that get generated. The first being the action plan itself. But even while implementing the action plan, the teacher may come up with lot of resources uh, for the students. And here, when uh, the when we talk about the resources in uh, in the context of action research, it is the, we term them as the collaborative resources because it is the result of not only a single mind that is of the teachers, but even the students they give the feedback about uh, those resources. Uh, at times, the teacher uh, even discusses those resources uh, with the uh, fellow teachers or the other colleagues, the experts. So, it is uh, definitely a collaborative uh, venture and everybody has contributed in betterment of those uh, resources used in the action research. The next principle in action research is that of uh, risk. As we have been discussing, the practitioner gets into the action research basically because one is not happy with the current uh, practices, the current situation. 
when one gets into action research, one designs a action plan that is to be implemented. Now, this action plan is certainly something different than the current practices and here comes the factor of risk that if the, the new plan that is uh, to be implemented is something the deviation from the current practices. So, there is a risk of that may be working or may not be working. So, the action researcher should be ready for taking such kind of risk that okay, if the current practice is not working, then let me think of something else and let me try out something else. So, that uh, smaller uh, risk is involved, but the action researcher needs to be ready for taking up that risk uh, for conducting the action research. The next principle is that of the plural structure. Now, in the process of action research, there is not only the practitioner involved, but more importantly, the uh, group uh, or the people with whom the practitioner is working, that group is involved. Now, uh, when the researcher uh, designs one's action plan, it is one situation, one's problem and he or she himself has designed the action plan. So, one would be definitely happy with it or one would definitely say yes, it is a perfect plan. But when it is implemented and suppose there are 10 people in the group, those 10 people may have 10 different opinions. 10 different perceptions about that action plan, the changes that are made in the uh, uh, current practices. So, the researcher in this case needs to take into consideration everybody's opinion. It may be different from not only from the uh, researcher's own opinion, but there may be variations in the opinions amongst those 10. So, the researcher needs to be ready to accept those variations in the opinions and uh, then move uh, ahead when it comes to uh, changing the action plan for further improvement. The last principle is about uh, theory, practice and transformation. If we uh, really look at action research from uh, nutshell point of view, then it is something that is there is a theory it, which is tested through practice again it contributes to the theory. Now, this theory is something related to or rather limited to only the action researcher may not be applicable for the rest of the world, but even for his own practice there is a small theory which the person has developed uh, for that group. For example, the teacher may say suppose I uh, use this particular cooperative learning strategy, the students would be uh, learning better that is a theory. So, one uses practices, uh, one actually practices that theory and uh, depending on the experiences and the results, one that again goes into uh, contributing the theory that in this particular situation it helps or for this particular content it helps or maybe this is the content for which cooperative learning may not be the best suitable uh, modality. So, thus this is a process of theory practice and it also brings the transformation into the uh, way it is practiced for the, uh, the way it is practiced by that particular practitioner and thus the principle of uh, theory practice and transformation uh, is actually seen operationalized. This is transformation not only in terms of the actual action part but even at the back end, the mindset of the action researcher, the his or her own philosophical thinking about it, the beliefs, perception, everything keeps changing though gradually during the whole process of action research, uh, during the um, over the cycles of the action research. So, uh, one definitely this is something that happens maybe uh, uh, subtly to a greater extent but uh, that is a definitely a process that happens in the action research. So, thus the process of action research is woven around all these uh, varying principles and uh, at uh, they are seen in some or the other point during the 
whole process uh, of uh, action research. Though taking up an action and giving it the support or the base of a research is at the core of action research. There are mainly four different types of action researches that are considered uh, today. The first one is the traditional action research. Now, as the name suggests, it is stemmed out of the Kurt Levin's uh, thinking about action research. So, it is it deals mainly with the uh, various institutions and uh, T groups and the group dynamics and so on. So, it takes into consideration not only a person, uh, uh, single person per se, but it deals with or it considers its impact on the whole uh, institution or, or the whole organization. The next type of uh, action research is the contextual action research. It is based on the TRIST work on, on action research. The contextual action research is more uh, domain based or domain specific and it talks about the interrelationship between the various organizations. The third type of action research is uh, called as the radical action research. It is based on the Marxist uh, dialectical materialism theory. It is generated out of the demand for the balance in the power distribution amongst the society. The other two related terms uh, with this are the participatory action research and the feminist action research. The fourth and the last type of action research is the educational action research. This type is based on the uh, John Dewey's work and his belief that the practitioner should become the strong persons in bringing the social change or the change in the uh, scenario around. And through this thinking, this type of action research has taken birth. So, many of the educational situations we see this type very strongly, especially uh, the teachers even at the university level, the teachers are involved in various kind of action researches. Thus, there are four different types of action researches and depending on the focus of solving the problem or improving the situation, one takes up the uh, that type of action research and carries it further.